Welcome back to the idols of today. Last week we talked all about that basic question, what is an idol? And we saw how Luther led us through an idol is anything or anyone that we look to to give us all good things in life. And we saw how God yearns and longs for us to come to him for all of our needs, for all of the things that we desire. And so now we're going to start making our way through various different idols. And I want to start here with what is sort of a common quote in business leadership and apply it to our lives of faith. And so it's often said that the greatest threat to future success in a business is past success. The greatest threat to future success is past success. Why? Well, because you get complacent because you say, well, this worked before and so we need to just keep doing this over and over because it's going to work. It's this idea that I can't and don't need to change that, well, things are good now and so we need to just be comfortable with where we are. And there's that word, comfort. Comfort. I think you could rephrase that phrase this way for our lives of faith. The greatest or biggest threat to our future growth is past growth. This idea that, well, we've spent time growing before, or that was for that season, or I've already grown so much in this way, or I've done enough of that, that I'm comfortable where I am now, and that I don't need to grow anymore. There's a lot in the scriptures that talks about this sort of comfort, but not directly. So I think the way in which the scriptures talk or address this modern day idol, the idol of today of comfort, is through the lens of talking about suffering, talking about trials, talking about difficulty in life. So there are passages all over the place, whether it's in Romans that talks about suffering produces endurance, endurance, character, character, hope. And where does it start? It starts with rejoicing in that stuff. Or it talks about in James, don't be surprised about fiery trials and things that you will go through. Uh, Other times too, the Bible gives language to us to not just expect, but to even to look forward to being uncomfortable. But where I want to spend our time today is in the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus says these words to his followers, to you as well too. He says, if anyone wants to become my follower, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Forever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life because of me will find it or will save it. For what does it benefit a person if he gains the whole world but forfeits his life? Or what can a person give in exchange for his life? Jesus says it very plainly, right? Now we are to deny ourselves, to take up our cross, and to follow him. And I think that language of denying ourselves is perhaps the most important thing to cling on to here. Because a lot of times when we're trying to avoid being uncomfortable, who are we seeking after? Who are we seeking to benefit? Well, usually us, right? Ourselves. And so we don't want to have to go through this or we don't want to have to do that sort of thing because we want to just be comfortable as we are. We're complacent, if you will, with the growth that we've had, with what's gone on in our lives. And so when we think about this, well, what does it really look like? Here's some examples I think that come to mind for me. So how much more comfortable are you after you've worked all day, if you've dealt with the kids, to just sit on the couch, scroll through your digital media, just watch YouTube, watch Netflix? How comfortable is that? Instead, maybe you do something with your spouse, whether you play a game whether you talk about the day, whether you read a devotional, watch a right now media something, it takes more energy to do those. It could provoke uncomfortable conversations, but ones that could benefit you. Or what about the ways in which we seek to be financially secure too, right? That there's a sense in which we look to our finances to give us comfort. That well, I know that I have this number here, And that gives me comfort. 
instead of trusting that God will provide, even if you have that and if it were to be gone someday. But I think there's no more place that we see this idol of today's comfort than in relationship. At least I know this is true in my life. Because how true is it? How much do we choose the easy path? How much do we choose the easy path of being comfortable, of normal, of routine, of dysfunction in our relationships instead of the difficult thing? To confront someone about something they said to us, to have the difficult conversation over past hurts or present hurts, or to even have that conversation of faith too. So often it is so easy to choose that one of comfort instead of being uncomfortable. And by doing that, we miss out on what God could be doing in that person's life and in ours as well. We could spend a lot of time thinking about the different ways that we are and we seek to be comfortable. But I think there is one place that we can and that we should seek to be comforted by. It talks about in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 that our God is a God of all comfort. But it also says we share in Christ's comfort so that then we share in Christ's suffering so that then we share in his comfort. And so it's not that we avoid these difficult things, but in fact we do them and then by doing that we actually experience in Jesus suffering and difficulty and then are comforted because of that. But that's the beautiful thing God offers to us, comfort that only he can give, that is true and lasting. And so as you think about this, I invite you to ponder, what are the ways in which comfort has become an idol in your life? Confess those things to God, to Jesus, ask for forgiveness, and then maybe ask the follow-up question. What ways is God calling me and what ways is God leading me to be uncomfortable? To actually sacrifice my comfort for the sake of him and his kingdom or for the sake of my neighbor who needs me. Let me pray for you as we seek to become uncomfortable people together. Lord Jesus, it is so difficult. It truly is to create these moments of being uncomfortable, Lord, with all that is happening in our lives. Lord, you know. Sometimes the last thing we want to do is take the little bit of comfort we have and sacrifice it for you or for the sake of someone else. But yet, Jesus, we know too that you call us to lives of being uncomfortable. And so I pray that you would forgive us. Forgive us for the times when we have chosen comfort over being uncomfortable for the sake of someone else. Open our eyes and our ears and our hearts even to the opportunities we have to be uncomfortable so that then we can be a part of your plan to love and to care for all those people in need. Give us an opportunity this day too to be uncomfortable and let us walk into that by faith knowing that you are there and knowing that we don't go alone but instead Jesus we follow you. We pray in your perfect and holy name. Amen. Make sure you like these videos and subscribe to them as well. It really helps other people find them. God be with you this day. We'll see you on the next one.